What's up, people? Welcome back to 4Bet Blind. My name is Will. Today I'm mixing things up and bringing you a session I played at Beach Poker Club in Eugene, Oregon. The games here are a little bit smaller than the games in Portland, but the action is still quite good, and I somehow managed to get all in three times in four hours, including a final hand that had a river decision that I'm still not sure about. Without further ado, let's dive in. The first interesting hand starts with an early position player opening to $10 and the low jack 3 betting to $25. I'm in the cutoff and I look down at ace king. I 4 bet to $70 and only the low jack makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of jack king 7 rainbow. He checks and I go for a standard continuation bet of $40. There's plenty of one pair hands and straight draws that will continue versus this price so when he makes the call I'm not overly worried. But that starts to change when the turn comes the queen of diamonds. There's now tons of two pair combos I lose to, in addition to hands like 9-10 or ace-10 that may have floated the flop. The problem is the SPR is so shallow, there's not much I can do but go with it. He's probably just as likely to have a hand that I beat, like ace-jack or ace-queen, as he is to have a hand like king-queen or queen-jack that beats me. So I go all in, all in. and yep he beat me into the bot, fuck. The river brings an innocuous seven of diamonds and my opponent chose king queen of hearts. Very unfortunate to be in this universe, I'd much rather be in the one with the raccoon ratatouille. Next hand there's an early position raised to $10 when I'm next to act with ace queen of diamonds. I go for a small 3 bet to $25. The small blind cold calls and the original raiser calls so we go three ways to a flop that comes 8, 5, 3 with a flush draw. Both players check to me, and I could bet, but I don't like my prospects against a cold call range and a raise call range, so I check it back. The turn is an offsuit jack and both players check once more. I have a sliver of showdown value and can still hit an ace or a queen on the river, so I check again. It seems as though the poker gods are rewarding me for not being a weirdo who plays ladies events as the river is the ace of hearts, giving me top pair and what's very likely to be the best hand. The small blind checks before the early position player actually leads for $60, nearly the size of the pot. Not much to do in this spot but call, as I beat some of the value range he'll be betting here. I click call and my opponent shows pocket jacks, one of the value hands I cannot beat. I guess Santa had it right after all. Later on there's a button straddle to $6 and a call from the small blind. I look down at king queen in the cutoff and open to 25. The button makes the call while the small blind folds so we go heads up to a flop of 10-4 queen rainbow. When check 2 in a heads up pot, many players are betting way too frequently, meaning their betting range is going to be about as balanced as Nick Airball taking a sobriety test. When that's the case, hands like top pair play reasonably well as a check raise, so I make it 75. My opponent spends a few moments deliberating before deciding to call. Off to the turn which brings the king of diamonds giving me top 2 pair. At this point my opponent only has about $280 left and I'm going for it all so I bet $100 which in retrospect is a little bit on the small side. I'm primarily trying to target queen x hands and hands with a jack that now oh he's all in. Well good luck I'm not folding. The river is the 3 of diamonds and my opponent shows king queen so we end up chopping this up. I'm happy to not lose this one, but it would be nice to win one. I get a decent shot at that in this hand when the hijack opens to 6 and 3 players call before I look down at 8-9 of diamonds in the big blind. I'm happy to take this multi-way for a cheap price so I call and 5 of us see a 6-10 deuce rainbow flop. All of us check to the button who bets $12. The small blind folds and I'm getting ready to make the call, hoping to get lucky on the turn, when I remember the immortal words of the great Cal Hockley in Titanic. All life is a game of luck. Hmm. A real man makes his own luck, Archie. Of course, Cal Hockley created his own luck by kidnapping a child and condemning his fiancée and her lover to an icy death at the bottom of the Atlantic. It's a little early in the day for abduction, so I settle on a check raise to $50. My opponent decides to let this one go and folds. Happy to go a little bit outside the box there and maximize my result. Speaking of outside the box, this hand starts with an early position limp and the low jack raising to $12. I've got ace queen of diamonds in the cutoff and I 3 bet to 35. The limper folds but the low jack calls and we go heads up to a flop of ace king 9 with 2 spades. 
The lowjack checks and I bet $40. He pretty quickly makes the call. The turn is another king, pairing the board and bringing another flush draw which prompts a check from my opponent. This is where things get a bit unconventional. My opponent has decidedly more king x in his range, primarily because live players will raise call hands as weak as king jack or king queen offsuit preflop. That fact makes this an attractive check as my opponent's continuing range has strengthened considerably. On the other hand, if I'm checking back all my ace x, I'm going to be playing a hyperpolar strategy on this turn where my value range will be composed of trips and boats exclusively. That strategy feels a bit nitty and might lead to me missing out on some value. For that reason, I decided to bet $70, hoping my opponent isn't slow playing a king. So far, so good as my opponent makes the call relatively quickly. Off to the river which comes in offsuit 8. My opponent checks again and it's gut check time. Nothing has changed from the turn except now my opponent is probably slightly less likely to have a king when he check calls the double flush draw board. But do I have the toughness to handle the times he check calls or check raises with a king knowing I could have just checked it back? If you're a regular viewer of the vlog, you probably know what happens. I go for it. I cannot say no to thin value. I go ahead and put in my remaining 205. I don't get snap called and I don't get snap check raised so I'm feeling pretty good. In fact my opponent eventually says, I have a weak hand but I don't believe you. So at this point I'm rooting for a call. I do think taking a bit of an unconventional line helped here. Most players aren't triple barreling which probably contributes to my opponent being in a more difficult spot. Eventually, after about a minute or so, I see a single chip land in the pot and hear the dealer say call. I get the distinct pleasure of tabling this beautiful value bet and scoop a nice size pot to cap off the session. If you want to see another spot where the river completely changed the outlook of my session, check out my most recent vlog here. After this, I get up to cash out. In the end, I was in for 700, out for 664, giving me a loss of $36. Overall, I think I played okay and will definitely be back at the beach in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the hands in the comments. If you like the content, please consider subscribing and liking the video to help grow the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video.